Are you having a hard time deciding what to watch or read this summer? Well, this is the video for you. This is my, if you like this TV show, try this book. And remember, it works the other way around. If you liked the book, you should also try out the TV show. Let's get into this. Quick disclaimer here, you guys. So first, we're going to start with shows on Amazon Prime. The first one is going to be a fantasy recommendation, and that is a very popular show called The Boys. This is a show that features real life superheroes who may or may not be a little more corrupt than what they appear on TV. So for fans of The Boys, the perfect matchup here is to read the YA series by Brandon Sanderson, starting with Steelheart. This also features a boy who is in a dystopian world where superheroes' powers corrupted them and regular people like himself must live in their world. This was a fantastic trilogy and despite its YA title is one that is well worth the read. It was also one that came out before The Boys, so just be aware that it's a little bit less dark than that TV show. The next show on Amazon Prime, The Expanse. Now obviously this TV show is a book series, so I am going to skip beyond that and say if you liked the epic scope of a space opera that features not only a murder mystery in season one, but lots of politics, it has a wide variety of different human civilizations, and there is alien presence always lurking in the background. If you're looking for this kind of similar vibe, I would definitely recommend you check out The Standalone to Sleep in the Sea of Stars by Christopher Poloni. Now I understand that it's not going to have every element of The Expanse show because it's a multiple season show with a single standalone book. But sometimes we get a little bit tired of those series. And if you're still looking for a far future human world with that alien presence that is more in the background and more subtle maybe than other TV shows or books out there, this I think might be a pretty good matchup. Now let's move on to Apple TV. The first show that we have is going to be For All Mankind. This is one of my personal favorites. And it features an alternate history in which Russia landed on the moon before we were able to. This series focuses on the astronauts and their families as we Americans are rushing behind the Russian astronauts trying to- In. And we are not stopping there. Moon lab. We need to accelerate the base. You're gonna be an astronaut candidate. Not only is this a fantastic series, but if you love this one and would like more like it, you must check out The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Kowal. This series also is an alternate history that features the space race, but in this one, for different reasons than shown for all mankind, we get females entering the space race much earlier than they did in history. And this trilogy really focuses on one particular woman and her adventure into becoming an astronaut, somewhat similar to For All Mankind. The next show on this one is going to be Severance. This is a very slow paced show that is full of lots of mystery and intrigue in a world where several people have volunteered to have their consciousness cut in half. Their first alter ego only experiences the world in terms of and my personal after life. work. So they don't remember going into work and they don't remember coming out of work even though they do it every day. However, the story focuses on the alter ego that is stuck at work perpetually and hates its life. 
but remember, every day it tries to leave and doesn't remember how torturous it was. This is a really messed up series with lots of really interesting twists and turns. A handshake is available upon request. Thank you, may I have a handshake? And if you really adored this series for what that was, a book you must check out is Permutation City by Greg Egan. The first chapter is very similar to that first part of the series and is a really interesting one. But the book starts focusing a lot more on many other topics. It's a very nuanced book, but I would highly recommend that for fans of Severance, you would probably enjoy the standalone Permutation City. Let's jump into Max. The first show on this list is going to be an older one, Westworld. Westworld was very popular a few years back and focuses primarily on a AI generated world that is wild, wild west, where users of this world can interact with AI who play non-playable characters and they're allowed to get away with anything they want, including murder. However, the show starts to go through lots of twists and turns as the non-playable characters start to remember what's being done to them. This is a fun, twisted story with a futuristic Western that not a lot of authors are able to pull off. I think there may be something wrong with this world. However, I would highly recommend you check out the book The Strange by Nathan Bellingrad. This is a recent release and definitely takes place in the wild, wild west, but it's on Mars. It also follows a main character who's going through a struggle for survival. And while it doesn't necessarily have the same twists and turns Westworld does, it does have several awesome AI characters that come into play. Remember that these stories are not the same, but they do have similar vibes. The next show on this list is going to be Scavenger's Reign. This place, it's like a puzzle. Nothing really makes sense in the way we know it. This is a fantastic series that I have come to love. And if you don't know what it's about, we're following a space crew that has been separated because they crash landed on a strange alien planet. This show is full of a lot of very grotesque and disturbing biology that was impossible to look away from. If this is a show that you're really interested in, I would highly recommend you check out Jeff Vandermeer's Born. Now, not only do all of Jeff Vandermeer's stories have this almost exact same description, but a lot of the biology that's featured in this particular series is somewhat reminiscent and reflective of some of the biology that was in Jeff Vandermeer's book Born. The next two series on this list are all, were both available on Hulu. The first one on here is going to be The Orville. Definitely worth the wait. This is a parody of Star Trek and definitely goes over the top with some of their jokes. This series was written and starred in by Seth MacFarlane and definitely reflects his sense of humor. Can I have one of these mints? Those are marbles. We're giving you one last chance. This parody also becomes a really interesting piece to talk about some societal commentary and some cultural context that's happening around the globe today. There are so many pieces of the show that have deeper subtext that I actually ended up growing to love the characters and really hoping for another season of the show. If you're a fan of the parody style of Seth MacFarlane, there are two possibilities for you. The first one is going to be a book that I recommend all the time, and that is Quality Land by Mark Uwe. This is a translated work 
in, from Germany, and it was a incredibly out of this world absurdness of a dystopia where Amazon runs the world. This was really over the top in the sense of humor, and it really had a lot of parody elements to it, and yet really had a lot of social commentary and cultural commentary about our consumerist ways. And the story went a lot deeper than I expected it to. So if you haven't yet picked this one up, I would highly recommend it. However, if you've already read that or you want something that is a little bit less absurdist humor and a little bit more just fun satire, a book that you need to check out is going to be The Standalone Stringers by Chris Panettiere. I've also talked about this book on my channel and gosh, look at that cover. Isn't it gorgeous? But this one is definitely a roaring good time about a space survival story of being captured by slavers, trying to solve a mystery just in time to save the entire universe. And yet there's so many good sci-fi ideas in here that I ended up really enjoying this one too. So both of these have a little bit of element of the parody satire, and both of them have some strong social commentary that fans of the Orville will probably enjoy. Last but certainly not least on this list is going to be the fan favorite Firefly. Take my love, take my land, take me where I cannot stand. If you happen to have been living under a rock and haven't seen the series, you need to go check it out right now on Hulu. Don't worry, this is not a sponsored video. The reason why fans loved Firefly so much was for the characters, for the found family, and for the vibe of space western, yet space survival. There's a lot of really cool pieces in this story, and it had so much potential that finally concludes with the movie Serenity. There are two books that you might enjoy if you are a Firefly fan. If you're looking for a book that has that similar storyline and yet feels like coming home, a book you may need to check out is going to be This Alien Shore by C.S. Friedman. This is a duology that I've talked about on my channel before and really has a lot of plot similarities to the Firefly story and is one that I would highly recommend. However, if what you like more about Firefly is the found family scenario, then maybe you should check out Becky Chambers' Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. This particular novel and the second one in the series very much so reminded me of Firefly in terms of the comforting found family in space. I don't know about recommending the rest of the series as I didn't quite enjoy it because it doesn't continue with the same characters, but I do think the first two books in that series are fantastic. And that does it for if you like this show, try this book series. If you have any other suggestions or if you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to give me a thumbs up like and leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Until next time, you guys.